Alright, hi everybody. In this video, we're going to create a friend score kick in Widal. Let's begin with the oscillators. I am going to activate three oscillators, including one instance of noise oscillator and two normal oscillators. I am playing in F sharp 4, so let's move a couple octaves down with each oscillator. Let's pick the envelope number 2. Do a shape something like this, remove the attack, let's drag this into the pitch of the oscillator 1. And let's disable these for now. Let's choose the basic shapes. Let's remove the phase randomness. Let's activate LFO1. I'm gonna change the grid size. Do a shape like this. Throw it into the level. Uh, one thing, uh, let's actually route it directly to the effects and let's bypass these filters. Next thing is the oscillator 2. In here we are going to keep this basic saw wave shape. And let's use this LFO1 here in the level, but let's use it backwards. So what that means is, now when the punch is playing from the oscillator 1, this saw wave ducks down using this shape. So we are only using one LFO to control the volumes of everything and we can change this up however we like. And there is no need to use multiple um, LFOs or envelopes for this kick bass rhythm. This is the easiest way in my opinion, at least with the friend score kicks. Let's um, remove the phase randomness from this oscillator too. Let's use the sync mode to change the shape of this to be a little bit more like a square wave. Next up, let's use a LFO and let's do a shape something like this, drag it into the sink. So this is a really subtle change, but um, when we add some distortion and other effects, it will multiply. And let's route this through the filters 1 and 2. And lastly, in the oscillator section, let's activate the noise oscillator. I'm gonna use a envelope number 3, remove the attack, do something like this, something pretty snappy, I guess. Throw it into the level. And I think we are done with the oscillators. Um, next up, let's activate these filters. And what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to change this first filter to be kind of a high pass. Let's Turn the drive all the way up. Let's go to the effects and I'm gonna activate the distortion. We are going to use the hard clipping distortion. Let's pull the drive all the way up and we're going to use the pre-filter. So this is just a filter before the distortion. Add some resonance. And next up, we are going to add a compressor. And we are not going to touch these settings. Let's use a equalizer between the compressor and the distortion. With this, we are going to boost these mid frequencies. And finally, let's use a phaser before the distortion. Turn the depth to zero, so it's a stationary phaser. And 
and um, we are pretty much done at the moment in here so the final step uh, if you really want is um, to mess around with this filter number two so um, this is a setup where this filter has a kind of kind of a big effect to the overall sound so by messing with this filter you can change the characteristics of the sound pretty drastically so uh, let's try to use this Uh, finally, let's try to use a envelope and let's move this facing filter around. So um, as you can see, with uh, messing around with, with this filter, trying these different shapes, you can get kind of a lot of lot of different results. But um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay with these really, really basic shapes to keep it simple. That was just to kind of demonstrate what you can try. Well, uh, this is a super, super simple patch. And um, there is some things you can do. For example, playing around with this equalizer is one of the things. So as you can see, um, this phaser is just kind of a filter at this point because it's stationary and um, phasers use all pass filters in serial. They move these all pass filters around related to each other. So uh, this is what creates the traditional phaser. the traditional phaser effect and actually you can kind of see it in here how these filters are kind of moving around this is not probably a really uh, kind of accurate demonstration how it works but um it's a nice visual clue and it actually makes sense if you look at it and um yeah uh, not many plugins give you a view like this in my opinion but um yeah, so um, use the phaser and of course the distortion uh, in Vital you basically have one good distortion and it is the hard clipping distortion. Yeah, so um, that's the Vital and um, let's look at some additional effects you can try if you really want. I am only using this EQ inside this mixer channel. But um, we can add some more distortion. I'm using this filtering plugin. As you can hear, uh, you can create a lot of different type of sounds with this one. Uh, let's actually copy the MIDI from this part. And I have a kick group in here. Let's paste this MIDI into an envelope controller. This controller is linked to the resonance. So this plugin kind of shows you the key where um, your peak is. Of course, if you are using uh, FL Studio's equalizer, if you make a peak similar to this, you can right click, go to key and select your key and you can select multiple different octaves. I think this is around 800 hertz. So now this is basically the same thing as this is over here but um I'm, I'm just using this plugin because this is really really kind of easy to use
and um, you can create kind of effects kicks with this plugin as well so uh, let's actually do a example mm, i'm gonna make a loop here and remember we are <clears throat> playing this directly from Widal at the moment as you can see let's press ctrl j move this knob and let's make a automation clip for this and um let's open up the automation menu and let's create a effect part in here something like this maybe let's try this see how it sounds Ah, it's pretty cool actually um let's change this loop up a bit it is like so so let's do like this maybe yeah it is pretty basic kind of french core fx kicks i guess and let's turn the depth all the way down because i was hearing the phaser kind of moving And let's do maybe one effect kick for this part. Okay, it's pretty cool. So uh, next up, as you can hear, we have a really, really nice snap in the first kick. But when the second, third and the fourth and the fifth kick hits, the snap kind of disappears. And this is kind of a problem with playing sounds directly from synthesizers. So, um... What I recommend you guys to do is, uh, if you make your kick in F sharp 4 and you think it sounds cool, but when you transpose your kick, let's say two semitones up, you think it sounds even more tight and stuff like that, and that is usually the case. So these two kicks are completely different characters, and um, you can, let's say, open up Edison in here. You can hear we have a really, really nice snap to the actual kick. Now, uh, what you can do is you can isolate the tail. And you can pitch it up. And down, however you like. But um, let's actually take this upper layer. Because I think this sounds more tight. Now, um, just simply, if you want to use this more tight sounding thing in uh, F sharp 4, just move the tail two semitones down. And um, you get kind of the character of the more tight sound, but played in F sharp 4 or whatever you really like. So I guess this is kind of the raw end result we have. Directly from Vidal with just FL Studio stock effects plus this uh, filtering plugin. But remember, you can do the same filtering thing with any stock equalizer if you want. This is just a handy tool to have. Remember, guys, if you want to download this preset, this FLP, and get access to a lot of content related to hardcore music production, uh, you can join my Patreon tier 2. And if you just want to support me and get some occasional, you know, tutorial videos and maybe some behind the scenes content, join the tier 1 uh, if you want to support me. But um, if you don't want to join, that is also completely cool. And we will see you guys in the next video on YouTube.